there are literally dozens, I mean dozens, of attitudes about how to mix greens. Everybody's got their own take. Well, let me show you another one. I bet you haven't heard this one before. When I'm mixing greens, I like to think of it as not just mixing greens, but growing greens. Growing greens out of something else. And I found after years and years and in fact decades of experimenting with various ways of mixing greens, since there are so many greens, I found a, what I think is a really, really simple way to go. And that is to begin with one green, Rembrandt Viridian. Now when I say Viridian, I don't mean everybody's Viridian because other folks' Viridian uh, is not the same as the Rembrandt Viridian. The Rembrandt Viridian is a very clear, transparent, and, and dark green, blue-green, blue-green. So if we start out with Rembrandt Viridian, let me show you some possibilities, and if you're exploring with it, you may find even more possibilities. So let's go to the palette. First of all, here's the Viridian, and you're probably familiar with it already. So, and let me just, uh, I'll just briefly put a little, a little, uh, splot, splotch, a uh, color splotch right here and show you there's the color in its purest form. Chances are we wouldn't want to use that color um, in, pure, in its pure form in our painting. But let me show you what Rembrandt Viridian can grow into. So one thing, Rembrandt also makes a transparent oxide red which is a wonderful color. Um, and not only transparent oxide red, but also Daniel Smith makes a color called quinacridone burnt orange. Either one of those will do this job and do it beautifully. If you take, um, see, about, about one part transparent oxide red and mix it into about two and a half parts of the Rembrandt Viridian, you will get a lovely, lovely nature green or, or sap green. And, so, and I'm going to mix this right here, and I'm going to show it to you in its darkest form first. Um, the sap green, Daniel Smith also makes a sap green, but um, this will give you the opportunity to make that sap green uh, a, a little more neutral if you want it more neutral, a little more nature-like if that's what you want. <clears throat> so, I'm going to mix a brush here, and now I'll show you just a really uh, a transparent version, there's the sap green. You see how it grew, how the Rembrandt Viridian grew into, uh, or from a blue-green to a yellow-green, uh, a warm green. Now, uh, with this Rembrandt sap green, then we could, let me put this down and show you on the palette here, if we go into a very light yellow, a very warm yellow, such as the uh, um, Hansel yellow light or cadmium yellow light, or uh, of yellows in that range, uh, then we can add those to the sap green and raise the value and have, you see right here it is, have uh, continue that natural green. Now just a little bit more and we continue. You see how now it begins to look more like a spring green. Beautiful, beautiful spring green. So if we then take a sample of that, let's put that just a little bit of that spring green. Look at that on the canvas there. You can see how you can manipulate that um, for spring-like colors or other. Even You can see some of those greens even in the fall. Now if you add white to that, I'll pull that right in here. You can see on the palette, and then you put it right here. Add white to that. Uh, you can get a, a softer, lighter uh, green that uh, that we could, we would often see maybe in the springtime. Or um, well, there, there's no way that we can really um, identify all the things that this these greens will appear upon. So that's one direction to go with with the Viridian to grow it. Let me show you another direction you can go with Viridian. Uh, so I'll pull a little bit of the Viridian, Viridian right down here. Now, I'm going to add some ivory black to that Viridian. So I'll just bring some ivory black 
right next to it, right there. And I'm going to pull a little bit of the ivory black and just pull it into the viridian. Pull it into the viridian and watch what happens. And I get, I'll begin to get a really cool green that might work very well for interpreting shadows, uh, uh, deep, cool shadows that I might see. Now let's, let's put this in its pure form on the palette, on the canvas here. And let's, let me just like, spread that out a little bit. See there how beautiful that is? It's a wonderful, wonderful, deep, cool green that could very well, well, it also could interpret a lot of the, the um, tropical greens that we see those that seem to lean more towards that blue-green. Um, and then, with that, that particular blue-green, uh, well, there's a, m several ways that we could, could then allow that to become lighter. We know that uh, as a green becomes lighter, it depends on how the light's hitting it and also the color, the actual local color of the subject as to which way it's going to go. So let's try it. Let's look at what happens. We can add um, the lighter yellow, hence a yellow line. I'll just do it right here and look at what happens there. This is the blue-green mixed with ivory black. I've often heard people, I say I, often, so many times hear people who are teaching say don't add black to your colors, it will dull them. Well, that's not necessarily true. Uh, you can use black in your colors very effectively and actually create new colors. So there you see you get this really, really bright green or yellow-green mixture when you add the, the um, lighter yellow, the hence, this is in this case, this is hence the yellow line. Let's go over here. This is the Rembrandt um, Cadmium Yellow Deep. And let's look at what happens when we add the Rembrandt Cadmium Yellow Deep into that. We begin to get this, see this nice olive green. See how nice that is? when we have the black and the viridian mixed together. And then if we use just, this is the yellow ochre light. This is a, also a Rembrandt color, yellow ochre light. And let's just put it right here. Let's see if I can get out of the way so that you can see that mixture. You see that ends up being kind of a more of a, a milky green mixture. So uh, the, the Rembrandt viridian has marvelous cap uh, capabilities that uh, will allow you to move towards uh, or add into it numbers of colors and then out of that grow many many rich greens so I would suggest that you begin here with what I just did also try adding see what happens when you add alizarin crimson well I thought I'm going to do that very quickly before we close this out because this is fun it actually this is one place where green will grow into a blue if you add a, a little bit of alizarin crimson to it you get a little alizarin crimson here and if you add just a little bit of a lizard crimson to it, um, you might see a surprising thing happen. Let's just look right here very, 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 very quickly. Uh, lizard crimson added to viridian will create a purple. And that's when green, when purple grows out of green. Let's just put this right up here. There we go. Can you see that purple? Wonderful, wonderful purple there. Add a little bit of white to that so that you can see it better. You've got a nice purple there. So in this case, purple grows out of green. So, uh, to learn more about mixing greens, uh, consider our lessons 1 and 2 of series 19 on dyingmice.com. These are complete lessons available on download and on DVD. And there's your quick tip.